Connie Simbor with the national anthem. Connie's ready? Yeah. Oh, now what did that mean? The question mark over the logo. Well, here are the guys in charge. Ron Hogarth, Sweet Knox, Ray Scapinello will be handling the lines, and Ron Hogarth undoubtedly will be a busy man. It is his custom. Reggie Lemelin, the goaltender tonight for the Bruins. He is third in the league in goals against average and against the Flyers historically 6-10-0. Starting for the Flyers, Ken Reggett. His last start, boy, was it impressive. He knocked off the Calgary Flames right in Calgary a few nights ago. He was hot that night. Flyers are hoping he is hot tonight. Face-off brought to you by the King of Beers, Budweiser. For all, all that clean, crisp taste, this Bud's for you. Samantha, Jenny, Neely, Weimer, and Wesley. Baruby, Sutter, McGuire, Samuelson, and Fenves for the Flyers. Samuelson chases, spins one around for Kevin McGuire, plopped loose off of Sutter, brought up by McGuire, nudged on to Sutter, tipped for Berube, wedged off, though, by the checking of Weimer. Berube taken to the wall by Weimer, puck rolled right back off for Cam Neely, pass ahead right on the money to Janney, flips it across, and it's carried on by Weimer. Weimer hammers one. Oh, and that one snagged by Reggett, a good hard drive by Weimer. Floated back off the boards, and Ron Sutter able to tip it. It's brought back up now by Dave Fenvez. Fenves ahead, just pops one to the corner, and going in after that is McGuire. Leans on Janney, and the puck dealt right back off now for the play by Neely. Cross ice it came for Semeta. And Semeta just turns it back in, and the Bruins make another change. They bring out Peter Duras, and he's the forechecker that's able to knock that one loose and a couple of flyers down. It is Murphy's pass poked away by Semeta. Loose puck picked up and worked on for a backhander by Prop that's turned aside, and then Poulin was stepped into by McGuire. Loose puck brought to the front. Prop over for Duras, a shot, and another one, and that one knocked down in front as the first got through to Reggett. Prop, another one, and Reggett blocked that one away. Boy, have they thrown some rubber on this line right now. Poulin just went down, having been checked by McGuire. Buck taken by Murphy, rolled back off, and Prop couldn't reach it. Sinasano misses for Craven, and down the ice it goes. An icing touch-up, and we get a stoppage of play with 18.33 to go in this first period of play, and no score. Well, if these first couple of save saves are any indication of what kind of temperature Ken Reggett is carrying around, he must have a pretty high fever. Is he hot? What a chance for Peter Duras, number 16 right in front and then Brian Prop followed up with a rebound Galley made it happen he's number 28 for the Bruins that cut in there and then Brian Prop again with Ken Reagan making the stop pretty good Bruins pressure early not in uniform this evening the list is long for both teams four top names on the left are injured the last four are scratches for the Bruins of four of those names are injuries. The big name, of course, is Ray Borg. Oh, it's getting that time of year where you need about a minute and a half to go over all of those names. Somewhere there are American and International League teams that are hurting big time because you have to call people up, and that's what happened with Benvis today. On now with it is Carter. Carter jams one along, hoping for Christian, but instead gets Carpenter. Carpenter got away from the hit of Chikrin. Bobby Carpenter floats it behind. Carter there to get it. Took a chop from Chikrin, trying to spin and work it behind to Christian, but can't. Along the boards, Craven given a good lick by Carpenter, but the puck gotten on to Rick Tockett. Tockett bringing it on. He's got Karkner with him. Tockett trying to weave by Galley, but can't do it, and it just forced to the corner. Galley giving away some size there, but he got good body position on Tockett. The battle on to his side. Puck came to Tockett again. Floated it behind for Sinisalo. To the corner goes Quintal, and Quintal took Sinisalo away from the puck. Out to a side battle once more. This is what you expect when these two teams get together. A lot of work along the walls. Buck turned right back up now to Carter. Carter bringing it on along with Dave Christian. Big drive is snuffed right out by Murphy, and Murphy can start it back the other way. A pass is lost by Kerr and flicked back by Carter. Murphy tries to regather, but it's taken away by Bob Sweeney. Oh, he took some lumber from Murphy, who broke his stick. Behind the net now with it is Sweeney. Leaned on and carried to the corner. Murphy still without a stick. Sweeney around in front. A shot is turned aside by Reggett. Then it's Lyndon Byers. Byers along the boards to Bobby Gould. Back off the broken stick to Byers. Off the broken stick again to Gould. In with it comes Bob Sweeney, and he tries to turn aside. Murphy still without a stick. Puck played to Byers. Starts around in front and his shot is poked away by Murray Barron. A splendid defensive play for the rookie. You know, Tim Kerr is trying to get his stick to Gord Murphy. Now he'll get a chance to get over to the bench. Murphy will. But Tim Kerr was the only right-hand shooting forward. It didn't make any sense for Acton or Eklund 
to give him a stick because they're they're left-handers. Tim Kerr never could get the transition made, and you know what? Sweeney made a couple of good moves. When you sense a guy without his stick, you keep twisting and turning and doubling back, and the guy's got to hold you to stop you. Boy, they've got good possession time, don't they? Sweeney sends it across the goal mouth, and Hallgood is in to get that one. Lays it back along for Gould. Can't center because of the hit of Murray Barron. Buck dropped right back along and up with it is Eklund. After him is Neely, but he's quickly able to get it to Murphy and then through to Acton. Up the wing now to Tim Kerr, moving along with Eklund. Eklund able to get by, but offside is called. 16.05 to go. First period of play. The game at the Spectrum tonight is scoreless. At the island, undoubtedly Ivan Korovo will be in the lineup to help justify that move. Mike Liut may be starting tonight for Washington. We're not sure, but Jay Wells will undoubtedly play for Buffalo. St. Louis at New Jersey tonight. Pittsburgh at Edmonton. Don't know if Rootsalainen can move quickly enough to get east to west in time for that. I doubt it. Off the faceoff, Nellenby along the boards. It is poked along by Wesley. Still the battle on, and Janney is carried off by Ken Linsman. Buck squirts back out, and Samuelson had it knocked away by Neely. Neely goes down, and Reggett sets it up so it can be played by Craven. Or check that, Benvis. Now Mellonby handing on to Linsman. Linsman tries to shake by Semetic, goes in deep, shouldered off by Wesley. Puck turned right around, though. Scott Mellonby turns it over to Bullard. Bullard tries to get to the front. Fought off by that time by Semetic, but right back to Bullard it comes again. Mike Bullard works the outside, drops one around that sailed by Linsman, came right to Reggie Lemmel and the goalkeeper. Then to the corner it goes. Janney able to nudge it along and Semetic can start back out with Neely, though he can't control. These are the two most injury-riddled teams in the league. Flyers with 320 man games lost. We don't have an accurate total on the Bruins, but it should be in the neighborhood of 300, perhaps a little bit more. The Flyers lead the league and the Bruins are second. This one turned along for Ron Sutter. Can't float it by. Down to the ice when a flyer is on with this now. Comes Dave Poulin, nudges it along the boards, but Samuelson is there. Samuelson lifted one that went out of play, and the faceoff will remain near Ken Reggett. You know, Mike, you talked about the Bruins being the second most injured team in the National Hockey League, and yet when we think of the Bruins, we don't think of them as having that much depth. Well. One thing that Dave Poole and Brian Propp will give them is more depth. I mean, the Bruins gave up a draft pick for Brian Propp, so it didn't cost them anything in manpower. There's Brian. Of course, Ken Linsman came here for Dave Poole. And you get a guy that can play. You don't have to give up another player. That helps your depth situation. And there's no question that the Bruins think they have a team that's good enough to challenge for the cup. That's why they're not reluctant to go out and get guys that are 30 or older. That's the case with Dave Poole and the case with Brian Propp. It was also the case with Dave Christian when they got in from the Washington Caps. The short-term acquisitions, and Brian and Dave might play there for a few years, but not eight or nine. That's a long-term acquisition. In another year, you wouldn't have seen nearly as many deals that took place yesterday and today. But I think part of the reason for that is that so many teams feel they've got a shot at it this year. Right. There isn't a clear favorite. The 11th annual Dodge Flyers Cup Scholastic Championship will be held beginning March 22nd at both the Skadium and Faceoff Circle. For more information about this terrific high school tournament, call Hockey Central at 215-389-9434. 389-9434. Boy, speaking of high school hockey, the Boston Bruins, if you look through high school and college ranks, have 10 guys who have come out of American high schools or colleges. There's a shot by Kartner knocked down, hooked to the corner, and Brian Propp has it for Boston. Sounds odd, doesn't it? Back on now to Poulin. Poulin controlling along with Duras. The puck is given across to be kept by Galley. Floated to Propp, and a backhander went wide to the long side. Sinisalo stepping to this one. Ilka Sinisalo's pass on the money to Murray Craven. Had it tipped away, but following up is Tockett. Tockett centers. Craven can't get a shot away as it's defended away by Poulin and swept aside by Prop. Rolled along the board. Tockett tied up there by Galley from behind. Tries to nudge it along to Murray Craven, but Poulin in the way there. Still they battle the wall. And it is picked up and floated back off the boards, though not out. A fight on his hands. Karkner had to be forced back by Duras. Then played one that is knocked loose by Galley and turned onto the stick of Dave Poulin. Then Galley, then across to Stefan Quintal. Tried for Duras, but got nothing but wood, and so back down it'll go to be hooked along by Reckett and taken by Karkner. One shot for the Flyers, four shots for the Bruins, 13 and a half to go in the first period of our scoreless game tonight in the Spectrum in Philadelphia, where nine of the last 13 contests for the Flyers this year will be played. Not been that friendly a place for them, though. They are one under 500 here at home. 
Here's Bobby Carpenter centering, but that cut off by Chickren and dumped along to Eklund. Eklund's pass is cut off, though, by the Bruins and sent back by Peterson. Along to get it is Carter. He's bumped off, but not until he turned it loose back in deep. And Reagan able to get body position on the boards away from the onrushing Bruin and turn it to Acton. Right back it came to Dave Christian, though. Forced to the wall by Chikrin. In comes Carter. Couldn't finesse away from the checking of Belly Eklund. Carter comes by again. Knocked it loose, but a battle still on. Up with it is Eklund, and Eklund can steam it back across to Kerr. Floats a pass on to Acton. Acton with Eklund tried to play to him, but it went off him and down. All good, back to get it. All good, dumping it along the wall, and it's taken by Carpenter. Flipped it back into Ron Hogarth, the referee, so Carter had to steer it out. And Shell Samuelson takes over. 12 minutes, 20 seconds to go in the first period of this one. The Flyers and the Bruins are scoreless. Ken Adelberger will have special features between periods tonight. One of them dealing with Kevin McGuire, the other dealing with both Prop and Poulin. He's been working feverishly all day to put all of this together. There's one that inadvertently went off action as he was coming for a change. It is Samuelson dumping one back. And Wesley will come by to get it. Wesley pivoting away from the onrushing Mike Bullard. That pass went off the stick of Sweeney and is retrieved by Terry Kartner. Moving back out now, the pass comes across to Samuelson. Dumps it around the boards. It flops behind to Lemelin. Worked back across, and the Bruins can head back out again. Four other games in the NHL tonight, all of them vol involving Patrick Division teams, so stay with us all night long, especially in the intermissions when you'll get to see highlights between periods two and three. Ken Lindsman moving in. Fires a shot that went wide. Lyndon Byers moves after this one. Mellon be able to tip it from him, then back to Murphy, and across now to Murray Barron. And Barron just plops one to the corner. Conservative sort of game thus far. Flyers with two shots. And the Bruins have four as a hit applied by Kevin McGuire. Thrown back along by Weimer off the stick of Bobby Gould that came. Turned back out by Sweeney and guided ahead to Gould, who's out with Neely. Captain of the Bruins just dumps it in. The Bruins sure know a lot about Kevin McGuire, don't they? They've been locked against him in that Adams division. McGuire came to the Flyers from Buffalo, and for the last couple of years, Kevin McGuire has been one of the physical forces that the Sabres have used to play against the Boston Bruins. 10.43 to go in the first period of our game tonight from the Spectrum. We are scoreless. <laughs> Father and son having a great time here tonight. Jamie McVicker passes along word that the starting goaltender in Washington will be Don Beaupre tonight. They are underway, and they've already staked him to a 1-0 lead over the Buffalo Sabres. Jeff Chikrin back to get it. Fires it around the boards, and it is brought back up by Craven. Two on one with Sinisano. And the pass is back-checked away by Neely, who was able to get back, enabling Quintal to move to that side. Now it's Craven, unable to get away from Neely. Buck skipped up the boards, and Semeta with it. A pass that ricocheted off the winger Craig Janney and is sent back in by Karkner. Boy, the Bruins have to feel that they got a couple of breaks. There's one that went out of play into the penalty box. In that they are likely to face Hartford in the first round, and they aren't going to have to deal with Mike Liud at all. They're going to go up against a couple of very young goalkeepers, and they also don't have McGuire to deal with except tonight. Exactly. You know, if you've watched the Bruins so far, and you'll, you'll see Cam Neely do this as well. He's got 47 goals on the last play, and the faceoff is to Reggie Lemelin's left. The reason it is there is that Galley was along the boards. He didn't have an easy out. All he did was slam it up high, off the glass, and it went into the penalty box. While the Bruins have some skilled players that can finesse their way around, they do a lot of basic things well. They defended well on this play. That was Murray Craven's attempted pass over to Sinisalo, and Neely got back to break it up. But they don't get fancy in tight situations. They are a very disciplined team when they're under the gun, and they do it right. They make the easy play instead of the fancy one. Eklund to Samuelson, and a shot was deflected up over the crossbar. Best Flyers chance thus far of the game. Janney unable to control, and Pelly Eklund goes back. Eklund shovels it back up the boards, and Fenvis is there. Dave Fenvis stepped into by Semeta, but Semeta was the one who gave ground that time. Still the battle on, and Tim Kerr with it. That one hooked away, and Quintal had it off of Acton stick, then along for Samuelson. Boy, a lot of play between the dots of the faceoff circles. Not much penetration on the part of either team. Fenvis able to move it back out with nine and a half to go, and thus far an uneventful but hard played first period. 
Benvis tried to keep along it kick the battle on Eklund able to nudge it for Acton then Eklund sent one up front but this one cut off in the deep slot and brought out by Brian Prop. Prop's pass is feathered up the wing Hawgood is there turns one on goal and a save made by Reggett and Prop will have to get Chase back to neutralize. Brian Prop wearing number 36 Dave Poole in 19 and the other winger on this line is Duras number 16. Around the boards it came over for Mellonby. Little pass ahead for Lynchman, then Scott Mellonby dumped it in deep. Lemel unable to set it up behind, but then didn't control well. Mellonby turns one that ricocheted off Poulin and came ahead to Prop, and it's a three on two, maybe a four on two. Duras brings it in, the drop to Prop. Flip one that's tipped aside by Barron. And then Duras stepped into by Murray Barron on defense. Duras trying to fight his way along, but Ken Lynchman, the ex Bruin up with it, gave it up for a shot, hit the post as it came steaming in from Wesley. Now Poulin turns it along for Doris. Looks for Prop, who's trying to pull away from Barron. Centered one, and Reagan able to cut it off as Prop winds up wedged into the net by Barron. 8.21 to go in the first from the Spectrum, no score. Bruins pressure just before we left you. Boy, they're not afraid to get their defenseman up on the play. The shot right off the post. Bobby Carpenter ready for the faceoff, and he'll be in opposite Craven. Chikrin wasn't prepared. Seemed to be preoccupied with a problem along the boards for a moment, but now they're ready to go, and Ray Scapanello drops it. It's one, but off of Weimer's stick, and so they move back out. Weimer's pass is just guided right back in again by Carter. Stepping back to play is Jeff Chikrin. Carpenter stands into him, and the puck swirled back down the ice. There'll be no icing here, so Reggie Lemelin will tend it. Lemelin just shoots it along there for Wesley, dumped it up the boards, and it ricocheted to be carried back out by Carter. Can't get it along to Christian, instead it's Tockett. Unable to finesse his way by Wesley, brought on by Semeta, hooked away from him. And that's been the story of the first 12 minutes and 20 seconds. Every attack seems to be met, and most times before it even gets in deep. Offside, called against Boston. Boy, do you think what... Uh, the Bruins have had to give up to put this team together. It hasn't been a whole heck of a lot. Bobby Gould was a waiver draft. Andy Brickley the same. Brian Prop for a second round. Neely and Wesley for Peterson. Ray Bork for Ron Graham. They just haven't right. made many sacrifices. They're sure, certainly getting good mileage out of this guy. Bobby Carpenter, number 11 for the Bruins, has 24 goals, 27 assists for 51 points in 68 games. And you can see where he ranks on his team. But he's finally found a home after that one big year in Washington. Then he started banging around New York, then Los Angeles, now in Boston. He's playing some of the best all-around hockey of his career. Not as strong offensively as he was when he had that 50-goal year in Washington, but he's a lot better defensively, too. Here's Carter, able to shake by Carter. Carter, a shot, and it went off of Reggett and wide. Dump back to Jeff Chikrin. Chikrin floats one off Berube's stick and gathered in by Quintal. Wintall's pass is on the money. Carter foisted away by Karkner, and the puck popped out of play. We'll return to the Spectrum in Philadelphia after these words. You know, the Bruins have had decent scoring chances every time they've come across the blue line. That great move by Carter to get around Terry Karkner, but Karkner pulled him down, not before Carter could tee it up and get a pretty good wrist shot away. You know, Hogarth is supposed to be the guy that calls all the penalties. What has happened tonight? Murray Craven was dragged down. A couple of minutes ago, that time Carter took Carter down. Dave Poulin was nailed by McGuire earlier in the in the game. Nothing called. Yeah, it's a little surprising. He tends to be good for uh, three digits a lot of nights in roughhouse games in overall total minutes, but he's not seeing that much, so maybe he's considering uh, the notion of installing some more swimming pools in the summertime or whatever tonight. It's what he does in the offseason. Here is Samuelson flipping one that ricocheted off Acton and all the way down for Quintal. Quintal leaned on by Acton. Lock came back up near Fenvis, but locked up by a couple of players, including Eklund. Acton trying to turn it along, and Tim Kerr is there. Keith Acton came by. Puck came to him to the back to Fenvis it goes. Then around for Acton, but this doesn't seem to be materializing into too much just now. Acton wedged up along the boards by Sweeney. Coming by to get it is Tim Kerr. Kerr pivoting around the circle. Drops it on back for Acton. And Acton then to Fenvis, along to Eklund, to Acton, chopped away from him. Loose puck in front is scooped up by Bobby Gould. And Gould brings it back up with Lyndon Byers. Gould with a drive, and that one snared by Reggett. And Reggett just puts it right back into play, sending it along the boards. Moving along for it was Hawgood, but Kerr is up with it for the Flyers. 
nudges across to Dave Benvis, and Benvis just pops one well wide. Benvis would have good reason to be tired. He was just summoned this afternoon. The team that he was with, the Hershey Bears, was playing in Newmarket, or at least lodged there prior to playing a game. And so he wasn't scheduled to get into Philadelphia International Airport and until about 6 o'clock or 6.15 tonight. So he had to hurry to get here. That's when you wear your gear on the plane. You know, like the kids when they go to play early in the morning and they're in the station wagon with their gear on, just carrying their skates? Yeah. That's <laughs> Fenner got off the plane with his gear on. All good goes back. Locked up with Mellonby coming by his Linsman, and Neely took it from him. It is Neely bringing it back up, pursued by Linsman. Five minutes, 25 seconds to go, scoreless first period. Reggett decides not to go out, allow Barron, allowing Barron to take it. And Barron's pass got hung up in the back of Bullard as now a pass for Mellonby was off his stick and Scott could not control. Lynchman trying for Mellonby again, tightly checked by Neely, but he escapes. Mellonby works the outside now. Wrist shot by Bullard is just held by Lemelin and play is halted once more. Flyers with that becoming their third shot. The Bruins have seven, neither team has scored. Watch this reverse angle look at Mike Fuller's long cross-ice pass. It was pretty. It came a little too close to Scott Mellonby's feet. That's called jamming him. And it jammed him just enough that when it hit the back of his stick, it bounced off. Interesting tonight, Mike Fuller's playing the right side. He's a lefty, left-hand shot. Scott Mellonby's playing the left side, and he's the right-hand shot. That puck was a little further ahead. It was a nice pass. I mean, it's tough to be accurate when you're making a cross-ice pass like that. Another foot ahead of Scott Mellonby probably would have been in. Down to the ice. That time went to Brian Prop. Tried to jab one while he was falling, but couldn't, and it's brought back up by Tockett. Then on to Fenvis. Fenvis cranks a shot that is just snapped up out of the air by Lemelin, and with that huge beach basket on his hand, he's able to lose the puck in there for a stoppage of play. This copyrighted telecast is presented by authority of the Philadelphia Flyers and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form without the express written consent of said company. All the goalie gloves, it's not, it's not just his, they're all huge. Look at it, the size of that thing. I mean, they've got webbing, webbing portions off the top and off the bottom. You know what, when you, when you see that glove and you see the size of it, it's, it's amazing that so many goalies handle the puck as well as they do. No. I mean, they do not grasp the, the bottom part of their stick with that bottom hand the way a forward does. They can only basically guide it. Their shooting hand is the top hand. That's all the more reason why I disagree with the notion that it's an automatic penalty for a goalie to flip it into the seats and not an automatic penalty for a defenseman or forward because they have far more control over the stick. This one is sent in by Dave Poulin, gathered up there by Reggett and floated all the way back down the ice past Quintal. First one back for this will be Gary Galley. Galley just shuffle boards it along to Doris and then took a thundering hit that came from Tockett. Trying to step by as Dave Poulin but can't. Chikrin nearly wiped out, but was able to dump it back off the boards. Pop chips it loose, and Poulin punches across for Duras. Duras able to poke it back in, and Poulin will be the first one to get there. Poulin to the corner, held up along the boards by Terry Karkner, and it squirted away from Duras, so Reggett had to come out. There'll be a penalty coming up, and the penalty call is coming up against the Flyers' Jeff Chikrin. The first power play of the game will come up to the Bruins when we return. Four guys are scrapping along the boards. Watch the bottom right. Brian Prop tried to move in front. Jeff Chikrin hit him up high. Ron Hogarth has finally called one. Jeff Chikrin is off for interference. 3.53 to go here in the first period. And this is the biggest improvement the Bruins have made since last year. Last year, their power play ranked 16th overall. This year, it ranks third. Penalty killing second. Combined total of five for a special teams index of five. They are by far the best when you combine their penalty killing and their, their power play. Flyers are pretty well buried down in the middle of the pack. They are 16th and 4th on power play and penalty killing for 20th. 20 the total, and they're tied for 9th overall in the league. Puck jammed in, and Reggett is there. Swings one around the glass. Pass Tockett, kept alive by Christian. Finesse by Sutter, but lost it. Tockett able to give it on to Ron Sutter. Wedged out by Neely. Tockett trying to stagger free, but it's turned back over to the Bruins. If they hurry, they've got a 3-on-2, but Sutter's catching up. Moving in is Jenny. Nice poke check by Samuelson. And it is cleared back out by Ron Sutter. Boy, how many times since he came here from the Rangers has the long reach of Samuelson prevailed on just such a play? Here is Neely, carried to the corner by Samuelson. Along the boards, they battle it. It's just a rhetorical question, Jamie. You don't need to look it up. Around the boards, it came over for Neely. And then pivoting with it is Carpenter. To the back it comes, and it's worked by Wesley. Back over to Carpenter again. 
Wesley a shot, and that went wide. Carpenter couldn't tee it up. Carpenter tried to yank one along to Neely. Back for Carpenter, and then moving in is Christian. His shot hit the outside of the goal, fought off at the side of the net, and poked to the corner by Carpenter. The battle on again. Penalty time is down to 45 seconds. Talk it up with it for the Flyers. Can walk it back out along with Sutter. And Tockett slams one well wide of the Bruin cage. Ship change on now. Fenvis and Murphy, Sinisalo and Craven are out for the shorthanded Flyers as Prop just winds one back across to be covered by Weimer. Jim Weimer, the one-time New York Ranger and Buffalo Sabre, a pass, and Poulin nearly sneaked by. Reg it there to float it off the wall. It skips back up near Sinisalo. Pokes it along to Craven. Up the wing for Sinisalo. Tries to get by the defense, but it won't yield, and that's Weimer. Weimer back behind his own cage. Two minutes to go in the first period of this game. Eight seconds to go on the power play to Boston. Bruins haven't been able to get set up in the last minute of it, although they did a pretty good job in the first minute. Fenvis denying Brian Prop. And Weimer with a pass to Hawgood, and out of the box is Chikrin as the Flyers have killed it off. Here is Hawgood with a pass that is steered back in by Poulin. Around the boards it goes, slugged back further by Fenvis, cut off by Quintal, but he couldn't keep. Now forced off by Eklund. Eklund pivots, has Acton breaking, shoots one, oh, and it just went wide of the net as Kerr was breaking right in front. Karkner to play for the Flyers, shakes one off the boards to Murphy. And Murphy's pass back, checked away by Poulin, who goes down. Up with it, though, is Byers, and Lyndon Byers with a pass across. Now it's Carter, dipping one along the boards, tipped back out again by Acton. Going over to get it is Gary Galley. Eight shots for the Bruins, just three for the Flyers in this first period as we are nearing the last minute of play. It is Samuelson with a pass on to Pelly Eklund. Tries for Kerr. He and Quintal go to the corner. Two aside go in as Acton is there along with Bobby Gould. Acton able to pivot away. Flips one for Eklund, but it's just canceled right out by Gary Galley. It is Karkner. Stood up by the checking of Gould, who nearly hooked it across to Carter, who was breaking. Now across Samuelson. Denied by Neely, who poked it in deep. Terry Karkner to get it as the Bruins are making one more change. Samuelson takes a look up ice, gets the pass on to Keith Acton. Acton with half a minute to go now, plays it in deep, and Lemelin sets it up. Behind with it is Wesley, riding it around the boards for Weimer. Little pass ahead is deflected by Janney on the wing for Neely. Poked along, though, by Murray Barron. Janney comes by, checked off on the play by Barron and also by Mike Bullard. Barron is able to move it back out for the Flyers. Ten seconds left in the power play. Lintzman tried to go by, and Weimer took him out of the play. Now with this is Wesley, dips it to the corner. Tockett with a good check on him, and Tockett trying to get loose. Two seconds, one second, and the buzzer sounds, and the horn, and the siren, and everything else to end this first period of play. Well, it was one of those. Eleven shots, tightly played period. The Bruins had eight of them. The Flyers had three. You know, the Flyers just about matched the Bruins defensively that period. You expected the Bruins to be strong. They're number one. The Flyers were right with them, step by step. Only one penalty. Chikrin and interference. Rap were scoreless after one. Well, the trade deadline has passed, and we're going to be highlighting that all night long. But for now, our primary focus, insofar as the Flyers and Bruins are concerned, is the trade of Dave Poulin and Brian Propp, a trade that Propp and Poulin returning here tonight for the first time as Bruins. And as you might imagine, this was indeed a strange day that began for both of them around 10 this morning. How are you? Good to see you. Good to see you. Oh, hey, how's, how's it going, going Max, Rumi? Yeah. Uh, you just got away without buying me breakfast, dude. How's things going? How are you doing? And with that, the most awkward day in the lives of Dave Poulin and Brian Propp had begun. Their return to the spectrum would not go by unnoticed. For six years, they were instrumental parts of the Flyers' success. Prop moving right in, hands to Poulin, back to Prop. He scores! A short-handed goal! Isn't it strange? The more things do change, the more they stay the same. Prop is over the line. Prop, a short-handed bit block. Second one, he scores! Brian Prop, a short-handed goal! Dave Poulin and Brian Prop, after a brief separation, are back together. And Boston, they say, is a great place for a reunion. You know, Brian and I have teamed up and, and had a good deal of success on the ice, and it certainly is nice to have him with us. I think he's going to help us a great deal. I think he's a piece that, uh, you know, that could really help us go a long way. Poulin is such a classy guy, and well, anytime you get moved anywhere else, like I've never, it's never happened before and with him either, but with him being there, it's, it's like having a close friend back, and 
he's helped me out. We've talked a little bit in Boston, and when I go back, he'll show me around a little bit. And it's not, it's, it's not like you're going there just out of the new and just looking for things, but he, he'll help a lot. Boy, are we glad to have Dave on. Hey, listen, Dave, can I do your sticks or anything for you? Yeah. Here you go, Mr. Prop. Yeah, thank you. Thanks a lot. <laughs> Don't feel too sorry for either of them. Their Bruin teammates are spoiling them, and that's helped to ease the shock of being traded. But on this day, there are many reminders. I don't think you ever want to leave someplace that, you, that you've had as many uh, good memories and as many good times and, and the close teams that we had here. But, you know, I, I understand change happens and sometimes it happens for the better and you go ahead and you make the best of it and things have gone very well for the last six weeks. Poulin's trade came as a shock. Prop says he was expecting something. His age being one factor, his desire to test the free agent market at the end of this season was another. If Bob Clark didn't get something for him now, Prop could walk away and the Flyers not be compensated. Contract talks, Prop says, were headed in that direction. We had talked throughout most of the year and then we finally came to the decision that uh, we weren't going to resolve anything here. So I would have probably ended up playing out the rest of the year and being a free agent at the end of the year. But uh, as it worked out, I've been with Boston and it was sort of the same situation here. And We'll have to see if we can work something out. If not, uh, there still is a possibility that I'll be a free agent at the end of the year. The Bruins may not want that to happen if Prop continues to produce. Certainly, Ted Sater wouldn't. He's coached both in Philadelphia and understands their value. Not only do they do the, you know, the rewards of their specialty teams are being reaped right away for us, but I think you also see the, the leadership that they give you uh, in terms of what they bring to the rink every night. And they're coming from an organization uh, that's been a consistent winner and consistently on top of the game. And that type of attitude is contagious. And we have players of the Ray Bork and the Cam Neelys and the, the Craig Jannies and the Reggie Lemelins. It's, it's a very healthy injection for us. And that is it for the moment. We'll have more trade news to talk about in our next report, as well as an introduction to the newest flyer, Kevin McGuire. Stay tuned. Bill Clement has first period highlights and analysis. After one from the spectrum, the Flyers and Bruins are tied at zero. Yeah, you see Lyndon Byers, who has had some memorable games here, most uh, eventfully so without his gloves on, as opposed to the way you saw him there. Lemelin three for three, Reggett nine for nine, and that's why we're scoreless as the second period is about to get underway. Hartford and the Islanders, Buffalo and Washington, St. Louis, New Jersey, Ken Adelberger has advised you on Pittsburgh and Edmonton a little bit later start tonight at 9.30. In case you missed that long lineup of uh, injuries and people not in uniform, I'll run them down. Yuri Lottle for the Flyers is out with a shoulder. Mark Howe's back. Kerry Huffman has the flu. That's why Dave Fenves is here. Norm Lacombe with, Lacombe with the bad shins. Tony Horacek, Doug Sullivan, Derek Smith, Pete Peters, all healthy scratches. For the Bruins, Ray Bork has already returned to Boston. He's probably on a flight right now. Has the abdominal pull. Randy Burridge is out with an injury. Nevin Marquardt, Don Sweeney, Michael Telvin, Andy Brickley, and Gord Kluzak. Pretty decent names there, too. Yes. We would anticipate that that is a locally made sign. We've not really known of uh, any Bruins contingents that have come in other than the press and media and hierarchy, but Dave Poulin and Brian Propp will not be forgotten here as many other players will not who have resurfaced here with other clubs before their careers have ended. Remember in the early 1980s, Reggie Leach wound up with the Detroit Red Wings. Bob Kelly with the Washington Capitals and they were always greeted warmly here because Flyers fans do not forget contributions of guys who played so loyally for so many years. This is Gord Murphy at the start of the second period here in this jukebox known as the <laughs> Oh, somebody give that baby a kick. That's it. Unplug it. Along now it came for Janney, but it is knocked loose by Ron Sutter, hit from behind by Weimer. Buck brushed loose and punched behind by Neely. Couldn't be reached by Lemelin. Coming by was Craven as Lemelin for a moment was dangerously out of his goal. Now it's Craig Berube, a pass on to Sutter. Left it for Janney, hooked one that is kept alive by Barron. Wesley goes to the corner without a stick trying to play. Slammed off by McGuire. Puck turned back to Murphy. Wraps it along for Ron Sutter. Verubi comes in along with Sutter on Weimer who tries to kneel and press it. Puck kicked loose and is dumped back out. And so the Flyers will now regroup and the Bruins will have a chance to get a stick change and perhaps a personnel change too. Puck played on by Murray Barron on the stick of Verubi. Then got it to Craven but they rule that the pass was over two lines. 
And so with 19.03 to go in the second, we still have no score. Flyers will conduct two two-week hockey schools at their training site in Boris, New Jersey this summer. Players, coaches, and team staff will conduct sessions for everyone from youngsters to adults, and the cost for the two-week session is just $395. For more information, you can call the Flyers at 215-465-4500 during normal business hours. Registration is limited, so don't delay. <laughs> Puck played now by Shell Samuelson, and Samuelson's pass went all the way back down. Quintal will go to get it. After him is Ilka Sinisalo. Kicked along the boards, and Sinisalo couldn't get to it. Dave Poulin did, then tried to jam one further. It's brought up by Craven. Checked right off by Brian Prop. Nudged on for Poulin, but it got Samuelson. Poulin and Samuelson, and a nice play by Poulin over for Prop. Then he tries on for Duras, and Duras and Fenves go to the corner. Oh, what a hit by Tockett behind on Galley. Puck along the boards, kick loose past Samuelson, and is gathered in by Dave Fenves. You know, you have to know that Rick Tockett is primed for this hockey game. I mean, the guy that he's constantly compared to is Cam Neely of the Boston Bruins. That always brings the best out of the true competitor, especially because they play the same position. He really wants to show everybody that he's number one on the right side, not Neely. Poulin steps ahead. Dave Poulin controlling. Flips one that went off Duras and wide behind the net, centered in front by Prop, tapped by Tockett, and brought back up by Fenves. Guided along to Murray Craven, and Craven just floats one off the boards. Poulin able to spike it right back out, and onside, it'll be for Carter. Carter moving in, and they blow that play dead. It looked as though that Carter had crossed after the puck, but nonetheless, the puck will come all the way back. Bill, I know you were traded a, a couple of times in your career, and I'm just wondering. We know what we as broadcasters go through, and, and the fans, you see the signs, what they go through. What about the player? Well, you know, it's it's different depending on how often you've been traded. It's also different depending on how old you are. I was I was pretty young. I was just 24 the first time I was traded away from the Flyers, and you know I was scared. I mean, it's scary going to a brand new environment and a new team and having to make new friends. And and I was also hurt by the rejection. But the second time I was moved, when I was traded away from Washington, it wasn't as scary anymore. And you know, there was still a rejection, but it, it wasn't. It didn't manifest itself in the form of hurt. I was angry. I was angry, and, and I bet if we talked to Jay Wells, he would say that he's, he was hurt when the Los Angeles Kings traded him to the Flyers, and he's angry at being traded this time. Uh, once it ceases to be scary and you know you can handle it, then you're sort of angered at the rejection. So it's different depending on your age and, and how many times you've been moved. Does it salve the wound at all if you're traded to a better team? Now, the first time you were traded to a far poorer right. team in Washington and then on to a better one in Atlanta. Yeah, for the first 48 hours, it doesn't seem to make any difference where you go. But once you get there, if there's strong leadership and the team is winning hockey games, you bet it makes it way easier. Here is Bob Carpenter, who's been dealt a few times, too. Along off of Christian, Chikrin up along the boards, locked up there with Carter. Carter turning it along, eyed up on the checking by Acton. Tried for Carpenter again, Chikrin right there to meet him. Boy, both teams have really played this game well defensively tonight. Neither team has gotten that much attack going. Best Flyers chance was an Eklund pass that sailed wide of the net as he was trying to reach Kerr. It wasn't even a shot on goal. Here is Carter coming back for the Bruins with three minutes and five seconds gone in the second period. We are scoreless here. And in this period so far, we're shotless. Around the boards it came. Reggie Lemel in there. Scooped one back off, trying for Carter. Acton tries to shovel it through, though. Keith Acton wants to keep it alive, but it went back into the Flyers' end. The two prior games, both won by Boston, were scores of 2-1. One earlier here, back around uh, Thanksgiving time, and then one in January at Boston Garden. Here is Buller trying for Mellonby. Mellonby just wedged out of the play and held to the boards by Bobby Gould. Floated on for Murphy, and then Buller trickled one across the goal mouth wide. Lyndon Byers turns it, but Murphy, a Baron is there for a shot that is turned aside by Lemelin. So the Flyers get a shot on goal, their first one of the period. Along the boards, it is tipped further by Sweeney, gathered in by Murphy, flips one to the slot, but Weimer is there, just blocks it away, and then Barron drove it in with most of the team in the zone. They clear now, and so the offside is waved off as the Bruins start it back out. Wesley's pass ricocheted off Murphy, going to get it, and pivoting is Barron. Barron run off by Bobby Gould. Byers tried to work it further. Kicked back out to Wesley. Followed up by Linsman, but given right up to Weimer. And then the pass brought on by Janney. Janney moving in with Gould. The trailer couldn't sashay through Murphy on defense. It came right back off to Janney. Then to Gould. The drive is wide as he was trying for the top right. Along the boards, it's Quintal. But behind the net, Linsman again. Then along for Mellonby to tip back out. 
So the opportunities at the net are just measured out in thimbles in this game, and both teams have had one here in the first nearly five minutes of the second period. Here's Berube in a three-on-one, moving in with Lensman. Blocked off his stick in a strong defensive play that time by Galli. Berube in front, they score! McGuire! Kevin McGuire is a happy guy. His first goal in a Flyers uniform and his first game in a Flyers uniform, you know, it looked for a second as if the Flyers' chance had gone away. But Craig Berube followed the play up once, he, uh, once Kenny Lindsman had had the puck knocked off his stick. Berube went right to the corner, got it, turned around, and took a look. Perfect pass out to McGuire, and he just deflected it by Reggie Lemelin. That is only the Flyers' sixth shot on goal, but they lead this game 1-0. The Bruins have only had nine shots on Kenny Reagan. First goal is a flyer, and for McGuire on the season, that is number seven. It is Chaney dropping it back off for Galley. Tips it ahead, and it's feathered on by Semetta. Going to get it Neely, and Neely's pass is brought across by Chaney, shoveled over to Galley, and McGuire brings it back up ice again. McGuire just banks one off the boards, then is stopped behind by Lemelin. Lemelin steering in close quarters, and it's guided along by Quintal, but given up to Karkner. Pops one back that's gloved down, and here come the Bruins moving back out. A pass on for Janney, and it ricocheted off the heel of his skate after being touched by Barron. All the way back down, this one comes, and Lemelin out to get it. Reggie Lemelin shovels it over to Galley, starts a pass ahead that's on for Neely. Cam Neely pivots, trying to shake Rick Tockett. Arguably the two toughest right wingers and and most productive players on their teams are out there against one another just in this last shift. Eight for the Bruins, Neely, and 22 for the Flyers, Tockett. Peterson with a little pass ahead. Now Prop able to flip it loose. Went by Dave Poulin. Way out of his net is Reggett. Pass kept alive, though, by Hawgood. Trickles one that Poulin is after. Samuelson cleared. Hawgood kept. Fired a shot. Knocked down. Loose puck. Poulin couldn't get to it. And it's Craven out letting on to Tockett. He's got Sinisalo up the wing. Nice move by Tockett on Hawgood. And a diving play by Hawgood cancels it out, then Tockett centers. And it's up the boards and brought on by Poulin. It's right now at three on two. Poulin moves in with Prop. Hands on the wing. Duras a shot. Kicked away by Reggett. Wonderful save by Ken Reggett. And back up the wing. Here comes Tockett. But they're opening it up a little bit now. And they can't get it through Peterson. Shoveled along and Poulin. Tries to get it ahead for Prop, but it's sealed off by Craven's check. Now Rick Tockett guides it along to Sinisalo. Sinisalo flips one that is deflected away by Poulin. Brought back up ice by Duras and handed on to Brian Prop. Shift change on for the Bruins. Prop controlling. Shovels one in on Reggett. Calmly tapped aside, and that shift is over for Boston. Carpenter's line is out now. Christian and Carter are also out on that unit. It is Wesley sending it by Fenvis and then being hit. So it's Pelly Eklund back. Not much room there, so he dumps it back off to Fenvis. Floats it back out for Weimer. Weimer with 12.45 to go. Second period of play. The Flyers have the lead on the Bruins by a count of one to nothing. Berube and Lintzman, the assists on the McGuire goal. McGuire's seventh of the campaign. This one floated back off by Pelly Eklund. The time on that, 4.55 of the second period. Terry Kartner drives it back in. Devils are scoreless with St. Louis in the second. Pittsburgh and Edmonton a later start. Washington a 1-0 lead on Buffalo. Hartford and the Islanders are 1-1 in the second. Puck comes over to Tim Kerr. Falls down. And the puck is shot right back along and out again by Wesley. So the ice gave Kerr some problems that time. Eklund back to gather it in. The Bruins have made another quick change. Bobby Gould out to forecheck on Eklund. It's dumped back off the boards and dealt loose by Sweeney. Sweeney watched by Linsman, turns it back out. Murphy is there, hooked at by Gould. Up the wing now for Bullard. Bullard's pass to the slot, couldn't be reached by Linsman. Linsman right back to the point to Barron, then around for Linsman again. That off his stick, and Sweeney able to drop it behind. This is Quintal for Boston. Handing back up to Bobby Gould. Moving out with Sweeney. Gould just flies one over the glove hand of Reggett. It is played by Mellenby. Stepped into by Byers. And Barron is there. Barron falls down as sliding into him that time was a fallen Bruin that will identify if you give us an extra couple of seconds. Bobby Gould, 11.22 to go in the second. Our game here at the Spectrum is stopped.
Pretty good defensive play by Hoggood after a great move by Tockett. It looked like he was going to get around, but Hoggood doesn't really have great defensive instincts. You know how he makes it up? Good physical qualities, and he's got great speed. That dive was timed perfectly. He was able to get down there and hook the puck away from Rick Tockett, but what a move by Tockett in the neutral zone. Hey, this has been a well-played hockey game. I mean, hardly any mistakes, hardly any shots, 16 total shots. All right, Mike, wake up, boy. Come on, oh, no. time to get back to it. Come on. To the corner they go. I thought you were going to <laughs> carry on just a tad further for me there. <laughs> well, when I heard you snoring. No, I mean, no, I no. To... <laughs> oh. <laughs> Here's Craven, drops it to Tockett, and a save made by Lemelin. Loose puck picked up by Tockett. Out in front, and a backhander went wide. Tockett trying to pull loose again. Craven a shot off a stick, hacked at by Sinisalo. And then along it's picked up by Sweeney. Sweeney to Gould, spun away from Byers. And back down for Terry Karkner to get it. And the fans have their spirits buoyed by some good attack from the Flyers. Pass misses for Tockett. Turning with it now is Peterson. 11 shots for the Bruins. Three, or check that, two in this period. And the Flyers with 8-5 in the period. Here's Cam Neely trying to center. And the net dislodged by Reggett. And we get a halt to play. And now Murphy comes out to go at Semetta. Ten and a half to go in the second. Flyers lead 1-0. Well, you see the vital statistics on this game. Flyers with a 1-0 lead. There are some combinations operating, but basically if the Flyers win this, New Jersey and Washington lose, the Flyers will be all alone by one point in fourth place in the Patrick Division. Bill and I have forecast this thing's going to go right to April Fool's Day, so... If we follow through on what we project accurately, it won't matter that much, but Flyers, of course, can't have that kind of fairy tale operating in their existence. Janney up the wing, and here comes Neely in front, and he had a shot that hit the boards, and then Reggett bowled over. Reggett seems to be okay, and I didn't check the arm of the referee to see whether a penalty was coming up. I don't believe there was one. No, but Murray Barron did a good job of getting the hook into to Neely who went wide. There is Barron and he hooked him right in the crotch of the arm which is the perfect place in the, in the bend where the elbow is. Perfect place because not only do you throw the guy's shot off, there's the hook right there, but your stick can really hang on longer there. It kind of gets caught in the bend, caught in the groove and that's where Murray Barron hooked him. Crunched into Ken Reagan. Neely wanted to go high with that one. He didn't have enough time to tee it up from the time he got loose to the time he figured he had to shoot and when he did shoot, he just jacked it right up high over the net over the glass. Ken Reggett does not have really any padding at all right in the small of the back there where he rammed into the post. What happened to the big bad Bruins? Here's a team that's ruining the image. They have fewer penalty minutes per game on an average than any team in the NHL. They've only got one guy that's over 100 minutes in penalties and that's of course Lyndon Byers. Take a guess. They are in the bottom three of teams with major penalties. And that despite the fact that they play Buffalo so often because the Bruins and the Sabres have been historically in the last four or five years just scrapped and fought through every game, especially in the playoffs. Off this play, it came out in front. They try to reach Neely with it. He's able to scoop it back to Peterson, but he couldn't hold. Now Peterson dogged by Ron Sutter, who comes up from behind. Peterson able to drop it along the boards. It's brought up by Hawgood. Pass on the money to Janney. Ahead now with Neely and gives to him. Neely a shot, and that blocked away nicely by Karkner. Still worked along and off the board. Came to Janney. Finesse is in front. He scores! Craig Janney trickled one through, and the game is tied at one. You know, the Flyers had such good coverage on this. They were doing everything right, but there's one thing you can't control, and that is a crazy bounce off the glass. Hoggood dumped it in. You can see the puck came right out from hitting one of the ribs in the glass right to Janney. And I'll tell you something. Once Janney got the puck, the kid is great in traffic. Watch it come out to him. The Flyers close on him. Shell Samuelson is right there. He just hung on to it, hung on to it, and finally he got out of the pack. He just kept moving with the puck until he could fire. And it didn't have much momentum, but it got over the line by about six inches. And the Bruins have tied it on Craig Janney's 18th goal of the year. It is Samuelson back for the Flyers with this game tied at one. To the corner, Weimer. Around now to Acton. 
back for Weimer. Then along it's sent by Doris, and it's brought on by Brian Prop. Samuelson back. Prop with a shot, smothered by Samuelson. Prop tried to go to it again, and Acton knocked it down. Now it's Doris pivoting and laying it behind a prop. It is cut off, though, by Dave Benvis, pestered from behind by Poulin. Poulin able to get it loose out for Prop, and he sent the shot wide. Now it's Weimer pivoting. Fires one. Kicked away by Reggett. Wesley drives it off the boards. Poulin behind the net to Prop again and a short sider wide. Bruins are getting some shots. Not any necessarily great in chances, but here's Poulin trying to get one now. A pass in front deflected on goal and blocked away by Reggett as it hopped off Wesley. To the boards, it's held and a stoppage of play. Eight minutes and 30 seconds to go in the second period. It's the Bruins one and the Flyers one. Boy, the Bruins still have the heat on. Good move by Jim Weimer. Kind of a spinorama deal along the boards to, to get the, rid of the shot. Paley Edmund had moved out to choke off the board, so he just did a little 180 and spun around and let the shot go. Ken Rega was there for the save, but the Bruins are a good forechecking team. They get a lot of their pressure, not on the rush. They can score on the rush, basically with Janney and Neely out there. But other than that, they live and die with their forechecking. There's a shot that went off Carpenter. The Flyers' defense was able to pick it out of there. Reggett steers it back now to Chikrin, and Chikrin just lost one middle send the Bruins back. Galley and Quintal playing the defense. Up front, Boston goes with Carpenter. On the left wing, it is Carter, and on the right side, it is Dave Christian. Back for the icing touch-up goes Karkner. Karkner and Chikrin, the defense for the Flyers. Lintzman on the right, it is Bullard, and on the left, it is Scott Mellonby. Say, if you've ever wanted to golf with the Flyers, now's your chance. Prism, WYSP, and Keller's Creamery will sponsor four lucky golfers to play with the Flyer on June 4th at the fourth annual Flyers March of Dimes Celebrity Golf Classic at Riverton Country Club. To enter, fill out the entry blank available on packages of Keller's Butter or simply send your name, address, and phone number to Golf with the Flyers, care of Prism, Box 1252, Balakin with PA 19004. And if you win, your name will be announced on WISP and Prism. All entries must be in by May 19th, 1990. That's the longest 10-second read in the business, right there. There were some furniture commercials in Indiana that were that way, and they had prices and stuff in them. And they said, if you can't read it in 10, read it in 60. Well, read, you got to read it, the furniture ones, you got to read like this. Today and today only, right here at Siemens. Oh, yeah. gee, they're not one of our advertisers. Oh, Chikrit. Able to dump it back off. Tried for Tockett up the wing. Here's Craven. Shoots! And that deflected wide off the outside of the goal and is held there by Lemelin for a stoppage of play. 7.36 to go in the second period. The score of the game, the Flyers won. The Bruins won. That's a furniture ad. 7.36 to go in the second period of this one. Hawkgood, the only assist on Janney's goal. Barubi and Lintzman assisted on the one by McGuire. Off this face off, puck to Murphy, shoots one, padded away calmly by Lemelin, pivoting with it now is Scott Mellonby. Mellonby away from Carter, sent one off the skate of Lintzman that was wide, picked up by Christian and floated behind Carter and then controlled by Murphy and along to Lintzman. Upended by Carpenter's check, Murphy's pass is slowed, came on to Mellonby, back checked away by Carpenter though. Carpenter away from Mellonby, oh, had a fight on his hands with Bullard who prevailed, then turned it back to Murray Barron. Barron tries one for Bullard, and then Bullard shoved a man down from behind. That was Carpenter, and they're coming back with some more words, predominantly Bullard. Sergeant Bullard will go to the penalty box. Like and the Bruins will have a power play. Bobby Carpenter's going to join him on the other side. Carpenter's in there, so it looks like it cancels out. You know, the defensive division, the class of the defensive teams has been in the... Flashing to Mike Bullard. The Adams division has been the leading division. Interference to Bobby Carpenter. In the Adams division, the Boston Bruins are the best defensive team. They're also number one in the NHL. The second best defensive team in the NHL is the Montreal Canadiens. Number three, the Buffalo Sabres. And the top defensive team in the Patrick division, the New York Rangers, are the fourth best defensive team right now in the NHL. And that's one of the reasons they've been able to surge ahead of the pack in the Patrick division. The Flyers are the second best defensive team in the Patrick division, and they rank ninth overall in the league. What does it take to get to be second in the Patrick? Go undefeated in four. That'll just about do it. 
But it'll be very hard to catch the Rangers. Oh, isn't that true? I mean, they, they pretty well have a lock on a playoff spot at least. Down to the ice went Tockett. Off the ice will come Sweeney. There will be a power play, and it'll be the Flyers when we come back with 6.45 to go in the second of a 1-1 tie. Give you a reverse angle look at this penalty to Bob Sweeney of the Bruins. Rick Tocca was digging in top right of your screen. Sweeney took him down. So the Flyers are on the power play. And we've talked about their home stand. They've got nine of their 13 games left at home. A make or break factor may very well be the Flyers power play. It ranks last in home power play categories. It's 16th overall, but if the Flyers can get the power play going, boy, what a boost. Can you imagine what a boost it would be having this many games at home? May have eavesdropped on that conversation. That's why I held out a second. I was hearing Ron Hogar say something, and it's a warning to Sinisalo for holding the stick of an opponent. He's got one of the friendliest smirks going, though. He's not really had that much to call tonight. We no. talked about his tendency to call a lot of penalties. But he was talking to Sinisalo about holding the stick. He said, if you hold the stick one more time, that, that sure looked like something that Hogarth might have wanted to call, but he let that one slide with a warning. Kerr on the draw with Dave Poulin. In to get it in the corner. Sinisalo worked over by Galley. Puck sent back to the point. Murphy shoots one. Pad stop made by Lemelin. And it's poked away from Galley. Comes back and fires it around the boards, and so it'll be Craven going back to get it. Flyers with their first power play of the game. Both teams have had only a power play. Four minor penalties called and one apiece being coincidental. As ahead with this now is Murphy. Dumps it up the wing. Kelly Eklund starts ahead, but it's an offside pass. And so with 38 seconds gone on the power play, a neutralized faceoff will be resulting. Kelly Eklund has been one of the stronger performers the Flyers have had. Over the last nine games, Eklund has six goals to go along with eight assists. That's 14 points in nine games. There have been very few performers all year that have been a point a game. Mike, you see the stick that Ray Scampanello handed over? That's one of those un supposedly unbreakable aluminum shafted sticks. And that's one of the gold shafted sticks and it snapped off about a foot below the knob. Hardly see it happen, but it does happen once in a while. Brett, Brett Hall is supposed to be able to break him with a shot, but that was Gary Galley's stick. If the Flyers had been able to contain, they would have had the Bruins really under the gun since the Bruins were down a man, but Galley was able to get another one. He went to the bench and got one of the aluminum shafted sticks. That's why I wanted to see if that was in fact what he had broken. Mark Howe said that he had broken one and it just exploded like shrapnel, about 40 or 50 pieces once when he checked the guy from behind. There's a centering pass cut off by Dave, uh, or rather by Prop. He has Poulin out with him, angles one off, and Reggett has seen that one happen a few times, though in white and orange. And away from this, Ron Hogarth may have called a penalty. He's drifting over to the box, and I believe it's Rick Tockett who's going to go off, and that'll take care of the power play. 5.46 to go in the second. Our game stale made it at one. Talk it boxed on a hook at 14-14. You know, the Flyers have really opened the door for their young guys to step up and assert themselves. Bottom of your screen, dead center. There was the trip by Rick Tockett. But with Jay Wells having been traded and Brian Prop, a couple of openings now. Buck played along from Barron to Murphy, brought back up by Ken Linsman. Linsman hands on the wing to Craven, tries to get by, shoveled off, and the puck turned near the goal. Lemelin able to block that away, but Murphy with it. Flip one that is knocked down by Carter. Murphy walks right back in. Over to Linsman to Craven, and he tapped one that went into Lemelin and then wide. Craven sparring with Wesley as you watch play on the outside with Linsman. Christian held off his man so that Carter can wheel back behind. 5-10 to go in the second period of our game that is tied at 1. In 20 seconds, the Bruins will get approximately a one-minute power play. Moving back up with it now is Keith Acton. Drops it back to Eklund. Finesses to the slot. Chased off by Bruin checking. Eklund working the outside. Hits behind the net. Tried to jam one along, but it was blocked off easily by Lemelin. Now played the outside by Acton. He's given a shot to the boards by Wesley. Penalty time is now up. The Bruins' power play has now begun. They have 55 seconds in which to operate as that minor to Sweeney is ended. 
along the boards they still battle and this is an advantage to the Flyers if they can just keep it tied up back there as long as possible all good kicks and Wesley takes over Wesley has Carter moving ahead and it'll be Wesley just carrying he's got prop near the line and prop able to direct it back to the corner Carter going back to get this apparently a missed signal with Samuelson but they're able to clear it back down Four minutes and 10 seconds to go in the second period of this game that is tied at one. The Bruins with 13 shots, only four in this period. The Flyers with 10 shots in the period. They also have 13. Galley sends one along the boards. Reagan is there to get it. Flips one that went by the shoulder shrug of Janney. Janney able to pick it up and then back to Galley. Shoots one and a six save and a rebound. Went wide off of Neely. Neely drops it behind the net to Janney again. Looks for prop. Feeds it at the side off of Samuelson. Punched away. Penalty time is up to Tockett behind the net. Janney out to Neely. A shot kicked out again by Reagan. The rebound went across the goal mouth wide. Good Bruin pressure, but it's held off by Reagan and his defense. Galley drops it back off. It is taken on by Carter, and he'll drop back even deeper with three minutes and 22 seconds to go in the second period of this game that's tied at one. Janney checked off by Craig Berube, and help comes from Karkner to move it ahead. Terry Karkner walks it along. It's poke checked away by Weimer on defense, and the puck came back to him off Janney. Floats a pass, and Neely was cherry picking, but came up with nothing but pits. Pocket now right back along to Berube. Janney tried to turn it from him. Here's Janney moving in. Forced to the wall by Samuelson. Terry Carter picks it off as the clock ticks down to 2.52 to go in the period. And here's Sutter moving ahead. Sutter crosses with Tocket and shoots one that is deflected into the seat and play once again has stopped. Boy, the teams have to work like crazy just to get a shot on goal in this game, let alone to score. And that's the reason that Reggie Lemelin has yielded only one and his counterpart Ken Reggett has done the same. On the power play, Gary Galley has really become a key guy for the Bruins. That was his shot that Ken Reggett stopped. You know, Galley is playing a lot tonight because Ray Bork isn't in the lineup. The Bruins are riding a streak that is unparalleled in professional sports, and they will extend that to 23 straight seasons with winning seasons. They are a team with 87 points right now, so they're above 500. They will finish above 500, so that gives them their 23rd straight winning season. That's number one in professional sports. No team in any league has a longer streak than that. Lindsman ready for the faceoff with Sweeney. The longest string of frustration in North American pro sports, the Vancouver Canucks, who have had now 14 straight losing seasons. Paul good ahead, shovels one to the corner, going back to get this is Jeff Chikrin. Tried to bunt it around the boards, that didn't work. Bobby Gould trying to yank it loose from Chikrin and does. Gould, the Bruins captain, back to Peterson, shoots one, and that knocked down by Sweeney. Picked up and brought back out by Lynchman. If they hurry, it's a three on two, but now it's a three on four. Puck worked over to Mellonby, and that canceled out by the back checking of Hawgood. Wedged around the boards and down to the ice goes Sweeney. Puck kicked loose and Mellonby tried to get it, but Sweeney able to nudge it up the boards for the carry back out by Gould. Gould has Lyndon Byers wide and just floats one that pops to the glass behind Reggett. Driven around by Fenves, then over for Scott Mellonby. Mellonby's pass is off Linsman, spiked right back into the zone by Bobby Carpenter, and going back to play it as Fenves once more. Twice the leading defenseman in the American Hockey League, both times with the Hershey Bears. Fenves with a pass that missed for Bullard, gathered in by Carter and just backhanded in deep again. 100 ticks of the clock left to go in the second period of this tight-fisted, tight-to-the-best game that is a 1-1 tie. Mike Bullard trying to step ahead with it. Eyed up on defense by Wesley. Across for Mellonby, and he couldn't get the pass. Here is Wesley hustling back out for the Bruins. Wesley drops it on back to Christian. Centers one, and it went off the checking of Acton as he was trying to reach Carpenter with a pass. Back up now comes Tim Kerr. Drops it back off to Eklund, and a shot is calmly turned away, and the net dislodged behind Lemelin. Coming up in the intermission, Ken Adelberger will focus on the man who has the Flyers' only goal tonight, Kevin McGuire. And a complete synopsis of NHL trades. If he's able to get through that in time, and we aren't five minutes into the third period, he will give the scores and the highlights of the other games, too. And all of them involve Patrick Division teams. While the Flyers have acquired 
Kevin McGuire yesterday. They also signed Craig Fisher, the third round pick in 1988. He's been playing at University of Miami, Ohio. In 39 games there this year, he had 37 goals and 29 assists for 66 points. Not bad at all. Good offensive player. He's a center, 6'1", 175 pounds. Watch for him in a Flyers uniform within the next year or so. Clearly the best player on a team that was subpar in Oxford, Ohio this past year. Ahead now comes Galley, able to punch it through. He was the 10th leading scorer in his league on a bad team, so he must have exceptional that skills. Duras a shot, sent to the air by Reggett. Rebound is poked away, and along to get this is Tockett. Sends it up the boards, and it took a weird bounce. Sinisalo tried to regather, but it was across two lines, and so all the way back near Reggett it'll come in the last 51 seconds of this second period of play. Jiggs Torchiana. The goal judge, we're sorry to hear, sidelined in the hospital for tests. So, uh, Mr. Cyberling and Prowl are taking over the goal judging post tonight. We hope Jiggs is right back with us again soon. Bill will be telestrating in the second period. And that check of other scores will be important as we head down the home stretch. We hope you enjoy the coverage of the Philadelphia Flyers on Prism. Washington is leading. Hartford has a lead on the Islanders, and the Devils are leading. In case you want to know about the other teams specifically, Ken will update you with some highlights and scores. Poulin off the faceoff, tried to walk through Craven, got it over for Duras, a shot that is picked up by Reggett with the help of a tip from the defense. And so Reggett will just hold. Mark Howe was up and around today and down at the Spectrum for the morning skate, although he did not skate. Still doubtful that Mark will return unless the Flyers go, go pretty close to the distance in the playoffs. But at least Mark Howe is up and around and working out about three days a week, but certainly not skating yet. Those discs in his back can't take any, any skating motion. There's one of those United States College players, Peter Duras out of the University of New Hampshire. What do you think the odds are Mark's watching tonight? He doesn't enjoy when he doesn't play watching a game. He becomes rather unnerved by it. And Mark, there, if you are out there, there are times that Bill and I are unnerved by our show too. <laughs> Let me see, what are the odds? Let me just look through my TV guide here and, and see what else is on. <laughs> well, it is Lynchman on this face off with Dave Poulin. And Poulin able to jam one around the boards. Prop wedged off by Samuelson. And the puck driven around by Terry Karkner. Flipped back out by Tockett, gloved ahead by Galley, and they rule a hand pass, and rightly so, on to Brian Prop with 35 seconds to go in the second period. You know, very often I think a, a trade for a veteran is kind of an, a, an appropriate move. I mean, I think Brian Prop's going to give the Bruins a, a, good, a good two, three years. He's got at least that many years left. And it's just the fact that he is in the middle of a change. I mean, new people, new scenery, new hockey team. And I think sometimes you need a spark to get yourself going again. I mean, there are very few veterans, I think, that can play to their potential and help, a t help one team as much as they can help two teams if the trade comes at the right time of their career. Offside is called. The applause that you were hearing while Bill was talking was that the same picture of prop you were seeing was being flashed up on the big center ice television and the fans responded getting an opportunity there to uh, specifically salute prop and the same thing is being done right now with Poulin play back in now and it is Samuelson dumping one to the corner galley goes in after it galley run into by Sutter and the puck forced back down by Duras gliding out of his net to handle this is Ken Reggett just Able to turn one back up the wing for Tockett. Cut off by Duras and across to Prop. Three seconds to go in the period. He crosses and fires. It's blocked away by Reggett. And so both teams did not score in the first period. Both teams scored once in the second. And this game remains not only tied, but low scoring. We're going to see another 2-1 contest tonight. Time will tell. In that period, the Flyers with 11 shots. The Boston Bruins had a two period total, 17 Boston, 14 Flyers in goal, 1-1. Have yielded one. And interestingly enough, the leading shot getter in the game with five of his team's 17, Peter Doris, who is the line mate of Prop and Poulin. 
Off the face off the puck came back to Dave Fenves matched up with Samuelson on defense. It is Sutter with Barubi on the left. And also McGuire over on the right stoppage of play on a two line pass. Well the folks from Budweiser want to remind everybody that a winner knows how to party right. Please use good sense when you drink. Know when to say when. Kevin McGuire was with the Buffalo Sabres. But that's past tense. Yesterday afternoon he was traded here and he went from the second place team in the Adams to a team that is battling for a playoff spot in the Patrick. Overall a net loss of team points from 81 to 61. But aside from feeling the disappointment that anyone would from being traded anywhere to anywhere. He can at least counterbalance that with some success here. You may have been with us earlier in the game when he scored or seen the telestration of his goal just a moment ago between periods here. McGuire the only goal in the game for the Flyers and Craig Janney the only one for Boston. Neely sets up cement and a shot is saved by Reagan. He covers up and hangs on and the Bruins came up with a pretty good chance from the slot. By the standards of this game an excellent chance. Yeah exactly. Well Kevin McGuire at least knows somebody here in the Flyers organization. He's staying with Ken Reagan and he played in the American League in St. Catharines with Ken Reagan when they were both members of the Toronto Maple Leafs organization. We talked about some of Harry Sinden's trades and waiver pickups. He's also drafted pretty well. Rob Sameta, first pick overall. Not only have the Bruins stoked up for the playoff run in the National League, but their farm team in Maine has acquired no less than four new players. The Maine Mariners have for the run trying to get a playoff berth in the American League Northern Division. Here is a pass that came across now to Ron Sutter. Sutter ahead, drilled one that popped back behind and is set up by Lemelin. Lemelin floated one along that's gathered in by Craven, spiked along for Tockett, but it floated through him and it's brought back up now by Neely. Neely moving ahead. He's got Sametta with him. Neely controlling away from Murphy. Moves in. Save made by Reagan and it's swept aside by Tockett. Here's a pass over for Poulin. That knocked down. And it is swung back down the ice by Tockett. Lemelin able to get this one. Lemelin just scooping it along the boards and pivoting to play as Quintal. Misses on his pass just by a hair for Poulin and down it comes near Ken Reagan. Reggett setting this one up for Murphy. Then along the wing, it's jabbed back out by Poulin. Sinisalo ahead with Craven, two on two. And offside is called against the Flyers. 18-19 left in the third period. If you just joined us on Prism, our game is tied at one. About 150 tickets still remain for Thursday's game against the Rangers here at the Spectrum. These tickets may be purchased at the Spectrum or any Ticketmaster outlet, including most showcase and West Coast video stores. So you get to see Bernie Nichols and John O'Grobnik and Mike Gartner. Yeah, isn't that something? Pretty good player, too, the Rangers have acquired and Mike Gartner. Boy, about what? 150 goals total there on a good season for all of them. Yeah. And, and maybe uh, even more. Sorry. Mm -hmm. Flyers have just had an outstanding game in the faceoff department. They've won 25 of 35 draws. Ken Linsman has won 9 of 12. Dave Poulin, not such a good night for the Bruins. He's only won 4 of 14 draws, but... In this third period in the tie hockey game, if that trend continues, the Flyers need to try and get some faceoffs deep in the Bruins zone and let their faceoff guys do their, their magic. Ken Linsman's been so strong. Quinn Tall back behind his own goal for Boston with two minutes gone here in the third period. Game tied one to one. Pass for Brian Propp. Skip back down the ice and slides to the corner that is near Murray Barron, and he's the first one there to touch it up for an icing call. I think Murray may have hurt himself in making that turn. Seems to be okay as the faceoff will come back down. Reggie Lemelin is one of the one of the oldest goalies still playing in the National Hockey League. Gee, I haven't checked. He may be the oldest. You know that, Mike? I haven't checked. Mike Lee 34. But I totaled up the number of rookies that have played games. Take a guess out there. How many rookies do you think have played at least one game in the NHL as a goaltender this season? Anybody got their votes in? What'd you say? 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 23. Look out, you veteran goalies. 23 rookies have played games in the NHL this year in goal. Three for Quebec, Quebec. Three for three. Quebec, three for Winnipeg. Puck picked up by Eklund. Steps behind the net. Has Kartner out in front there. Eklund just circles the wagons, and the puck tipped right back out again. It is Jeff Chikrin. 
forced off by the checking of Carter. Puck came loose, and it's Peterson stepped into by Eklund. Coming by to help out is Acton, foisted it loose. Galley after it, leans on Tim Kerr, down the two of them go. A glove pops loose, too, as Carpenter trying to pull it loose, but it is hung up in the maze of knees and skates, and we get a stoppage of play with 17-23 left in this third period, one all tie. I think you're right. I think he is the oldest goaltender, Lemelin. Off this face-off, puck work loose, brought back up by Carter, then on to Christian. Christian ahead, watched there tightly by Fenvis, tried to center, ridden right off and taken to the corner by Fenvis. Now with it is uh, Lintzman, held up along the boards though by the checking of Christian. Lintzman trying to control but can't even get to it now as he and Christian have just worked their way into a stalemate. Puck jab behind and Carter spun one off the outside of the goal right near the post. It is held by Ragged. Boy, you got to think it's going to be a this type of goal that wins this hockey game. Everything has happened so close to the goaltenders, but the guys that are on offense have had to work so hard for their shots. Watch Carter come around and swing this one. I think it went, it went off the iron, didn't it? Well, yeah, kind of off Ken Reggett's skate in the iron, but Kenny Reggett hugs the post really well. Carter just tried to wheel around and catch him on the short side. But if not for that one break that the Bruins got, the Flyers would be leading this game 1-0. Although the Bruins have some well-known names, you'd think that that old line from Butch Cassidy and the Sundowns kid would come to the fore with guys like Carter. Who are these guys? But they have played so well as a team. Bill mentioned they're the best overall team in defense this year. Flyers are not that bad either. For the type of year they've had, they are ninth overall. They have been as high as fourth or fifth to the corner and now Craven steps into his man and it's along to Murray Barron that one knocked down by Christian right out in front and a backhander directed wide by Carpenter Buck poked off of Craven hand pass but over to Barron Murray Barron controlling for the Flyers defense with 16 and a half to go in the third period of this game that's tied at one it's rolled right back into Barron again starts it up the wing and on to Rick Tockett Tockett shovels to Sinisalo wrist shot and getting a piece of that was Lemelin but what a hard wrist shot from Sinisalo just now turning with this is Tockett Tockett spins one for Murphy but the Flyers will have to drop back Murphy forced deeper Pivoting back in his own end of the ice away from Carter. Misses for Tockett. Sinisalo with a pass. The kick back over to Sweeney. Bruins defense controlling. Shots on goal. 20 for the Bruins. That means they've had three in this period. And the Flyers with 15. They've had one thus far. Ahead comes Lyndon Byers. Hands back over to Sweeney. Sweeney backhands one that kicked off Byers. It's played by Tockett, but ricochets back across. Now Sweeney tapping one behind. Byers wedges out his man. That's Fenvis. Puck loose and Reggett throws it around the wall. Came for Tockett, but has gotten by Sweeney. Dumped behind and Murphy tries to get there. Gord Murphy pivoting. May have turned back into some trouble, though. Moves right out in front and then shakes one up the board past Sinisalo. Sinisato given a shove by Peterson. Sutter comes in and locks up with Gould, and the Bruins just dump it back in and make another shift change. It is Fenvis behind. Flyers fans, you can just sense some concern going through the seats as their team has had just one shot in the first 4.55 of the period. Now on comes Ron Sutter. Just shoved down from behind by Peterson. Gets up to play again. Dropped it off and Barubi a shot. That one deflected back out. Bruins started right back up ice again. Bobby Gould's pass canceled out by Samuelson. Poked along by Janney, but Samuelson is able to control and fire back in. So Lemelin sets this one up and swirling to play it. That time was Galley, then Neely tipped it back out on the backhand. Controlled by Samuelson once more. It is Terry Karkner pursued by Neely. Gave it up, tripped up on the play as Janney. There'll be a penalty coming up to Karkner, and the Bruins will come out of this with a power play. 14 minutes and 30 seconds to go in the third period. Game at the Spectrum tied at Bruins in the neutral zone. The problem with that is you, you lose sight of the second wave coming through. And in this case, the second wave was number 23, Craig Janney. Terry Gardner ended up losing the puck, putting it right on his stick, and then tripping him down. So the Bruins are on their third power play. The Bruins have to miss a guy like Ray Bork in situations like this. Ray Bork is going to win the Norris trophy this year as far as I'm concerned I think he'll I think it's finally his year after coming up short so many times he'll win the Norris trophy this year but the the Flyers are playing a Bruins team that does not have Ray Bork to backstop the power player to head up their penalty killing here tonight 
Galley across now to Weimer. Fires a shot. Poked out at the front of the net. It came off the top of the net, and then the net was dislodged. And a halt to play. What a crazy bouncing puck. And in trying to jam it home, I believe it was the Bruin that dislodged the net. Perhaps we'll get another chance to see this one a little bit slower than it occurred. Weimer let go the big shot. Another crazy bounce off the glass, hit one of the ribs, or at least hit the crack between the, the panes of glass. And it was, as it was coming down, Ken Reggett never lost sight of it. The whole key to that play is that Ken Reggett, when he turned, knew exactly where it was. Looks as though it might have been Reggett that deflected it and, and caused the uh, net to, yeah, it was Reggett. From the other side, it looked as though the prop and the force of trying to jam it home may have pushed it off, but that wasn't the case. Poulin and Prop and Neely, the power play unit for the Bruins up front. And in back, it is Weimer along with the man pinching and taking the hit galley. The hit came from Craven. The puck came to Prop. Bounced one off Craven to Murphy. Gave it away to Neely. Feeds one in front. Poulin a shot save. Rebound, scramble in front. Dug out of the crease by Samuelson and cleared. Oh, man, it was that close. And Samuelson came through with a magic wand to send it back down. Here come the Bruins again. They still have power play time. A minute 15 to go. Weimer rockets one around the boards. It is Sutter there. Carried to the corner by the checking of Poulin. Poked away from Brian Prop. Murphy in to get it. Flipped one away from Galleon down. It's shift change time for the Flyers. And it's also that for the Bruins. Here's Jim Weimer with 13 and a half to go in the third period of our 1-1 tie. Puck slugged back in by Galley, but it went into the seats. And so a neutralized faceoff to result with 52 seconds of power play time still to go to Boston. Great chances by the Bruins here. They picked off an errant pass. Cam Neely tried to move it into Prop, and then Brian Prop moving back to Poulin for the first big shot. There's the second good chance that was headed to the goal right behind Ken Reagan before Shell Samuelson picked it out. Well, we've been researching the ages of the goalies. Jamie McVicker has. We still can't find anybody older than Reggie Lemelin, who's 35. Mike Leutz, 34. Glenn Hanlon, 33. Greg Millen's 32. Pete Peters is 32. Puck shot out of play. And so again, more time off the clock. 47 seconds to go. So unless I hear otherwise, that's my story, and I'm stuck with it. Reggie Lemelin's the oldest playing goalie in the NHL today. Well, had the Detroit Red Wings gotten their way, it would have been Vladislav Trechak by now, but that ploy did not work either. So rather than Trechak, they'll keep Chevelday. Dave Settlemeyer? What about Dave Settlemeyer? I think you have to see action in a game. You have to what? See action in a game. Oh, okay. He's confident that one of these times it's going to happen that he'll at least get in a warm-up. But in the NHL, it has not happened yet. He's staying in tune, though. Janney, watched by Craven. Little pass on is given back to him by Galley. Janney once more. Still with 30 seconds power play. Pass tipped loose by Samuelson. Picked up by Sutter. Has Craven, but the pass went under his stick and back down. Craven trying to get away from Galley is pressed to the boards. Still the battle on along the wall. It's kicked away from Janney. Janney pivoting and starting back up now for the Bruins in the last 12 seconds of the power play. 1-1 one, one tie, 12.40 to go in the third. Moving in is Janney. Drops it back to Sweeney. A pass to the slot. All good a shot. Deflected off a man to the side of the net. Janney tries for Carpenter. Pressed aside and picked up and brought out now by Sinisano. Fresh from the box, it's Terry Karkner. And the pass went behind him. Now Lemelin with the teams at full strength and 12.20 to go here in the third of a one-all tie. Sees the play develop back up the wing to Bobby Carpenter. Pestered from behind as the Bruins are in the midst of a change, so Carpenter just plopped one right into the equipment of Reggett, and we get a stoppage of play. 12-11, left to go. Third period of action. The goals were scored a long time ago by Kevin McGuire of the Flyers and Craig Janney of Boston. Ken Reggett really earned this start tonight with his performance in Calgary. Just superb. Boy, that one came close, didn't it? Didn't it, though, if Craig Janney was able to knock that down in front? He had the basic sure thing. For a trip to the Flyers next season. Bobby Gould for the faceoff with Kerr. Scooped up by Jeff Chikrin. 
Chikrin just plops it along the boards to Kerr. Eklund and Acton are also up front as the puck popped into the seats. And arms go reaching from everywhere as we take leave of you for half a minute with our game still tied. Who's wearing the C tonight since Ray Borg is out of the lineup? Pretty good choice. Well, there be a the lot of leaders on that Bruins exactly. team you could go with, aren't there? It's one, another one of those veterans that Harry Sinden acquired. Wasn't afraid of his age, given the fact that he figured he had a pretty good team and could make a, make a run for it this year. Puck hooked ahead by the fallen Carter. And back down for Ken Reggett to stop. Reggett floats one along the boards. Cut off by Gould. Dealt back around, and it's set up for Terry Kartner by Reggett. Dumped along now for Chikrin. Cut off by Gould. Gould had it chopped away by Chikrin, and it's brought on by Acton with 11 and a half to go. A 1-1 tie. Third period of play tonight from the Spectrum on Prism. Acton to the corner. Stood up by the checking of Peterson. Moving back in to get it is Pelly Eklund, and it kicked by him. Now it's punched away by Chikrin right back to the corner. Still the battle on for it, and it's hooked away from Christian. All good over to help out. Lifts one that swaps into the seats. And so again, we have a halt to play. 11-11 to go in the third period. Reggie Lemelin at one time a member of the Philadelphia Firebirds in not only the North American Hockey League, but also the American League. You see the totals on this one in the terms of shots. He has faced 16 and yielded but once. There was a game one night in Maine. Lemelin was in goal for the Firebirds, and the Mariners called up a kid from Milwaukee of the International League who gave up six in the second period and tearfully was sent back down the next day. He returned later that season to win a championship for the Flyers farm team. That was Pete Peters. His debut in the American League was just a disaster. Murphy a shot, and that deflected wide. Moving in on this one now is Barron to keep it alive. Floated along by Quintal. Mellonby there. Dropped it back off for Linsman. Tapped one that went by Bullard. A shot by Murphy is turned aside by Lemelin. Punched along by Poulin along for Peter Duras. But it's back checked away by Bullard. Now Duras trying to fight away from Linsman. Kicked one back out that's brought on by Poulin along with Brian Prop. Poulin moving in. Cross to the slot and a rising shot to the glass. Picked off now by Murray Barron for the Flyers. Drops one back for Bullard that scales all the way down and trickles right near Lemelin. Lemelin floated it ahead and it's picked up by Poulin. Three on three, the Flyers have three backs, so no problem as Poulin just dumps it in. Reggett goes out to play, fires it around the boards. Craig Berube is there for the Flyers, but tipped one that is kept alive by Sweeney and then brought on by Berube again. Ran into Sweeney's checking, but got it ahead to Mike Bullard. Cranks a shot, and that one went off the glass. Around it is tapped by Wesley. Got it hung up in Sutter's checking, and it's floated by Sweeney along to Janney. And it is floated back out again by Sweeney. Rushing for this one is Fenvis. Nearly canceled out by Neely, but Fenvis is a falling play. Got it ahead to Samuelson. Now the battle continues with Wesley lifting it in. Reggett able to set it up behind, and it is controlled by Fenvis. A pass came loose and right onto the stick of Wesley. Then on to Janney. Punched it through for Neely. Has a man up the wing. Sweeney. Sweeney is shot, and it went wide. The chances are becoming more prominent for both teams here in the third period, but the score remains one to one. Ron Sutter tries to work his way in. Poked it to the defense, but it is Peterson there. Walled off by McGuire. Barubi dumped one along the boards, but it is controlled by the Bruin defense and popped into the glove. Up Sweeney, who steps ahead. Kartner tries to defend. It's nudged across now to Hawgood. Hawgood with a shot high off of Reggett, and it pops loose for Kartner to take. Terry Kartner wants to lead it back up ice, but gave it up to Peterson. Peterson just flies one back in, and the clock ticks down to 8.55 to go in the third period. A game that is of critical importance to the Flyers, less important to the Bruins, but significant nonetheless, as they are the leaders of their division and have a lead. Here's Carter moving in with Carpenter. Carter a drive, Pat up, rebound, and it trickled wide. Christian tried to center and couldn't do it. Roughed up by Chikrin on the boards. Christian tried to stagger free and couldn't. Kartner held off on the play by Craven. The battle continues along the boards, and Kartner able to, uh, Carter rather, able to stagger free near Terry Kartner. Puck was loose, and Sinisano starts ahead. Nice little pass to Craven. He's got Tockett up the wing, but the pass is just back checked away by Gary Galley. Floated one for Carter that went by him, and Samuelson will go back to play. 
8-10 to go in the third. Game tied at one. Samuelson with a pass. Tockett tips it back in. Drilled back out again by Dave Poulin. Tockett is there to float it back in deep once more. Behind it is stopped by Reggie Lemelin and set up for Poulin. Dave Poulin for the Bruins, able to tip one that went by Samuelson, so he'll go back to gather again. Flyers with three shots in this period, and the Bruins have come up with seven. Pass deflected away, and here they come again, pulling up the wing. Big drive, and it is held by Reggett for a stoppage of play. 7.39 to go in the third period. Our game here at the Spectrum, yeah, is tied at one. Hubby Carpenter down below, but decided to let her rip anyway. Ken Reggett has played his angles really well. Carpenter got the rebound. Couldn't get it by Ken Reggett. Dave Poulin had a good shot, too, that led to this faceoff. Ken Reggett was able to smother. Reggett's contested, I would say, probably in a two-to-one ratio more than Lemelin. I can't remember a good save Lemelin has made in the last half of this game. No, I agree with you. Here is Poulin, able to shake this one free. Right back in again. Dave Poulin, control, centers one, and it is yanked free and right back to Wesley. Hit the outside of the net with a shot. Driven back around again. Wesley once more, dumps it off the boards. First one to it is Poulin, has dropped nearby. Poulin just controlling on the outside. Deals it over to Prop. Then the outside, he gets it back from Weimer again. Prop over for Poulin, but it clicked loose off him. Cuts back out, and so Weimer will go back to get it, and the Bruins recoil quickly. Seven minutes to go in the third. Game tied at one. Bruins dump it back in, and a shift change is on as the Flyers handle in the person of Murphy. Then back up for Mike Buller to bring ahead. Stripped of the puck by Neely. Sent up the wing, and here comes Jenny. Fakes, shoots one, and Reggett made the save. Oh, he tried to finesse one by Reggett, and Reggett nearly bought it, but just got a piece of it. Now it's brushed along by Chikrin, and turned back off of Murray Craven by Jenny. Tockett recovers. Pass tipped up the wing. Sinis on the win. Wide with the jump. Rebound. Puck wide again. Incredible. Tockett is there. Can't center on the play. Craven taken to the boards by Peterson. Along the wall they go and fall with the puck underneath. Six minutes, 16 seconds to go in the third. It is still one to one. We talked about the two top right wingers in the game. Physical, scoring, boom! Rick Tockett right over Cam Neely. And a good scoring chance by the Bruins. And then this one, Elkis in the saddle had his shot tipped. It looked like he had the rebound. Well, we mentioned that Reggie Lemelin hadn't been tested lately. He sure got back quickly with a stick to stop Sinisalo from putting that rebound off the boards in. Carter for the Bruins, sets it up to Christian in front of back and pulled up by Reagan and the rebound pop by. Boy, this thing's becoming a thrill a minute, isn't it? Chopped along by Wesley. Kerr can't reach, Samuelson can. Clock winks down to 5.50 to go in the third. It's tied at one and here comes Acton. Has Kerr and gets to him. Shot is fought off by Lemelin. Acton with a shot and that one went through a maze of players wide. Samuelson tries to center and can. And it popped into the seats, and again, play is stopped. Well, the kitten's eyes are open. Two periods, it was quiet, but boy, has it gone back and forth here in the third with some marvelous scoring opportunities just going wide. You know, some quick puck movement gives you a lot more room in the neutral zone. That time, the Flyers moved the puck up, bang, bang, out of their zone. Keith Acton had a lot of speed coming through the neutral zone. He took the pass, moved it to Tim Kerr. Kelly Eklund was also in the play, playing the left side. Buffalo 1-1 with Washington in the third. Hartford over the Islanders 3-1 in the third. Devils 2-0 over St. Louis in the third. And Pittsburgh and the Oilers are scoreless in period one. Here it is 1-1 with 5.36 to go. The ex-Bruin Lintzman. The ex-Flyer Poulin on the faceoff. And the puck came back over to Peterson. Guides it behind the net. Off the mark, but it is reached by Wesley and shuffleboarded up to Duras, able to fight it back out. This will be a two-on-one if the Bruins get it, but they don't because of Murphy. Then back on now for Murray Barron. Jams one right in on Lemelin. He's able to stick around and then uh, hold and then shuffle it across. Gets it over to Poulin. Pass went off of Brian Prop, regathered by Tuckett, and just punched on back to Murphy. Murphy hands over to Murray Barron. 
Drops it off to Bullard. Across, he tried to get it to Lynchman, and the Bruins are able to shift from defense to offense in the three-on-three. -three. Brian Prop just floats one back in deep. Reggett sets it up behind, taken by Murphy. Murphy up the wing now for Mike Bullard. Neely eyeing him up, and so Bullard has to sweep away. Can't seem to get control. Turning it back over now to Murphy. Then on the turning stick of Rick Tockett. Flips one that popped out of play near Acton at the bench. And so the clock stopped with 4.42 to go in the third period. A dramatic period indeed. And tied at one. Ken Reggett has had to stand for long periods without any action. But he has been strong. Reggie Lemelin, when he has had to, has made great saves at his end. Flyers have 21 shots on Lemelin. The Bruins have 29 shots now on Ken Reagan, and we're tied at one with 4.32 to go in the third period. Janney wedged off, got a pass to Sweeney, and splendid checking from behind by Ron Sutter prevented a tremendous Boston chance on goal. Puck kept by Neely. Floats one that came right over to Terry Karkner. Karkner's pass ricocheted off Sweeney, but came up to Barubi. And Craig Barubi moves in. Checked off by Sweeney. Wrapped up once more. Puck taken by Sutter. Worms his way behind. Tries to get out in front. But the puck came right near Neely. And Neely can control for the Bruins with four minutes to go. It is dumped back along, and now it's McGuire up with it. Checked from behind by Weimer, and along the boards, Wesley. Given a good hit by McGuire. Puck floated around behind, and Weimer will go to get it. Weimer's pass right up the wing to Neely. Neely plops one across for Janney, steered away from him by Karkner. Bottled up, though, by Weimer. Walks in by himself as his team is in the midst of a change. Forced off by Berube, and so Craven up with it. Carter able to fling it away, and Jeff Chikrin will go back to play it on defense. Chikrin and Karkner, the Flyers' defense, as Carter tried to get in deep and couldn't. Back on now, Ilka Sinisalo. Sinisalo moves in for the Flyers and looks over the traffic for Craven. Tightly defended, though, by Peterson, and nothing came of that. Blast back along by Lemelin. Hit on the play was Carter. It's kept alive by Sinisalo. Around behind to Craven. Walled right off by Peterson. Good, hard play game here in the third period. Game tied at 1, 3.05 to go. Around it comes to Tocken, and a shot loaded wide. Lemelin didn't see it because of the screen. Now to the corner, it is Hallgood dumping it up for Carpenter, just wants to get it out of there, and it's hacked high by Samuelson, trying to stagger free at Tuckett, it's in a saddle, trapped between the pads of Lemelin, and the score remains one to one. Oh, my! The Flyers kept working at it, working at it, and finally, not one, but two Flyers were in front. Both Murray Craven and Ilkis in were in front. Very unlike the Bruins to break down defensively, especially at this stage of the game. But Rick Tockett made it all happen. He worked. He got away from Hoggood. Hoggood dropped his stick. Tockett was able to dump it out front, and Ilkis and Asalo just redirected it. Reggie Lemelin got those big old pads on it. Well, a big face-off coming up now for Boston and for the Flyers, but more particularly for Boston because they're in their own end, and so Dave Poulin takes it. Flyers win it. Fenbus let one go that went off of Weimer and is dealt back out by Brian Prop and then sailed back in again by Samuelson. Plops behind, and Lemelin turns and is able to swing it around for Poulin. Poulin tried to tap one, but it's checked away by Eklund. Pelly Eklund drops it behind, and spinning with it is Blake we or is, uh Glenn Wesley turned it right back ahead now to Duras. Tried to connect with Prop, but couldn't. And Fenvis back along for Kerr. Weimer right after him. It's followed up by Kerr. Couldn't get it through Weimer. Loose puck floated back out and picked up by Prop. He's got pulling up the wing. Brian Prop trying to get away from Fenvis. Pivots. Then it's checked to the wall by Fenvis. Puck taken by Eklund. Dumped right back along for Prop. Acton there to get it. Tied up by Prop, but was able to throw it back down. And so Peterson goes to take it in the final two minutes of regulation. Up the wing again, the Bruins bring it. Sailed around the boards, and it went by Reggett to the corner. Neely goes in, puts a good shoulder into Mike Bullard. The battle continues. It's wedged along now and trying to get to it as Sweeney. Puck wedged by Barron for a moment. Sweeney tied up. Help came from Ken Linsman, who did some good checking. Still on the boards, to a side continue it. It kicked over to Janney. Behind the net, Janney looking for someone in front. Has Sweeney there, but he's got quite a fight on his hands with Linsman. Janney still holds. Now Neely tipped one wide. Rebound forced away by Tockett. Kept though by Peterson. Paddles one toward the corner. It is jammed along the boards by Janney. Sweeney tries to get it, but it is cleared back out by Rick Tockett and out of harm's way with a minute 15 to go in the third. 
dump back ahead to Janney, and the Bruins will try to bring it again. This time, though, they want to make a change, so they lost one that Reggett sets up for Ron Sutter. Flyers bring it back and talk its pass. Flew away from Craig Berube. Taken to the boards by Hawkins. To the corner they go. Wesley is there. Checked off by Berube. The pass! Oh, and Pocket set it wide on a good setup from Sutter and another shot. It's dipped wide by Berube and just drilled back out for the Bruins. Now it's off the stick of Karkner. Christian in a drive. Pat stop a rebound. Hit the post. Another one. They score! The Bruins have broken the tie with 41 seconds to go. Bobby Gould is the man that put the Dave Christian rebound in. But the Flyers with a miscue in the neutral zone. Terry Carter had the puck jump over his stick. Christian let the shot go. Ken Reggett came out to cut down the cut off the angle and to, to really take away any angle that Christian had. And you can see that he had enough support to clear a rebound. I think the puck bounced over Samuel's stick, Samuelson's stick again. It went off the post. Samuelson tried to clear. Before he could get to it, Bobby Gould slapped it home. Nobody took Gould. And the Bruins with 41 seconds to go in a real tight hockey game have taken the lead. Two to one Bruins on Bobby Gould's goal. In the other two games, which ended two to one, Gould had the winner here at the Spectrum, and Dave Christian, the one that went off both posts at Boston Garden, had the winner there. Christian gets one assist on Gould's goal, and that's the only one to be had. Isn't that something? The two clutch men for the Bruins. 41 seconds to go here in the third. 30 seconds time out by the Flyers. We're looking at another one goal game right now. I've lost track of how many one goal games the Flyers have played. I think they've lost 18, but I don't think they've, I, obviously they've played more than that. Twenty-five is the total number of one goal games the Flyers have played. They've won seven, they've lost 18. Got to suck it up right now with 41 seconds to go. The Flyers just need to try and get it into the zone, get Ken Reggett out of the net. But it's obviously going to be pretty tough against this Bruins team. Flyers have 24 shots on Lemel and the Bruins 32 on Ken Reggett. And you're looking at the back of the guy that, the back of the man who has put the Bruins ahead by one. Bob Gould, one of the veterans that we talked about, that Harry Sinden acquired. He acquired Bob Gould earlier in the season during training camp. Boy, oh boy. He never quits, he plays hard. Would have made a pretty good flyer. Makes a pretty good Bruin. Here's the play ahead now to Poulin. Dumps it to the corner. Neely goes back after it. Murphy there too. Poulin takes it away. Got a shot away that's tipped loose. Now Prop sent one to the front, but that cut off by Murphy down to the last 25. Gord Murphy peeling off now for the Flyers, headed to the bench as Reggett passes slowed. Terry Karkner tried to steam it in and couldn't. Reggett can't get to the bench. Murphy now pivoting back, and the fans are all over the Flyers now. Karkner's pass ahead is cut off by Poulin, wrestled off by Sutter. Five seconds to go, and the Bruins are going to take this one, and again, uh, by a two-to-one score, they'll have swept the season series of three games all for the same score. The final in this one, the Bruins get victory number 42 to go with 22 losses and five ties, 89 points, and eight-point lead on Buffalo pending the outcome of their game. The Flyers remain in the basement, 26-33-9 for 61 points, a point away from New Jersey and Washington, pending the outcome of theirs. Well, Reggie Lemelin was there when he had to be, but the Bruins gave him quite a bit of protection. The Flyers tested the Bruins late in the game. Reggie Lemelin made a couple of super saves, especially one on Ilka Sinisalo, and the Bruins held on. Thanks to Bobby Gould's goal, they defeated the Flyers by a final of 2-1. We'll be back at the Spectrum after this.